Even if you don't care much about space exploration, you'll have to admit that Starship is a technological marvel. Starship and its boosters have attracted all eyes around the world. Its customers range from spacefaring tourists to government agencies like the Department of Defense, which is seeking a fast means to transport cargo anywhere on Earth. However, topping the list of Starship's customers is the largest aerospace in the United States, NASA. And to fulfill its grand ambitions, NASA's focusing all attention on SpaceX's upcoming Starship Flight 3, heralding the big demands that'll follow, which could completely change everything. So what is the big demand from NASA for Starship Flight 3? Is NASA overly reliant on SpaceX? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. If nothing changes, SpaceX is set to break another world record on March 14th as it launches Starship once again. While SpaceX and enthusiasts anticipate this eagerly, NASA's awaiting this outcome with tenfold anticipation. Because SpaceX's Starship is NASA's sole reliance to swiftly achieve their moon mission success, and now is the pivotal moment NASA's aiming for. Once Starship reaches orbit, it'll swiftly execute eight remaining payload launches this year while executing on-orbit refueling plans with tanker spacecraft to serve the moon journey. According to NASA's schedule until 2026, Starship will officially carry out the Artemis III mission, tasked with landing astronauts from the Lunar Space Station onto the moon's surface. The step seems fluid, and we can see that SpaceX's Starship can meet these timelines even more. But NASA, a traditional organization, always wants things to be certain and successful right from the start. This is why the Artemis III launch, initially planned for 2025, was pushed to 2026 during a congressional hearing last year. It took longer, but NASA officials have also carefully weighed many factors to make difficult decisions amidst the volatile situation caused by the rapid development of rival nations in the space arena. In the past five years, 10 nations have flown or joined more than 20 missions to the moon, half of which were successful. All the countries involved are Artemis signatories except two, Russia and China, the latter of which arguably has the most capable lunar program today. By the end of December 2024, the number of missions could reach 30. This high cadence partially reflects the fact that the rest of the world is catching up with the NASA of the 1960s. Lunar exploration is now a feasible national pursuit that can pay scientific and technological dividends. But the flurry of missions also flows from the fact that space exploration is a geopolitical exercise. The world's converging on the lunar South Pole because NASA's inviting them there and seems itself serious about staying. So NASA's story is now to quickly outline missions for Starship to complete and be ready to send humans to the moon by 2026, at least successfully before China's plan in 2030. One of the first missions that NASA has assigned to SpaceX is this third Starship launch for cryogenic propellant transfer capabilities in space. The test is part of SpaceX's 2020 $53 million tipping point contract and requires the company to demonstrate the cryogenic tank-to-tank -tank fuel transfer to provide insights for larger vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle transfers, a key capability needed for its lunar lander to ferry Artemis astronauts to the moon. This sets the stage for more complex performances in the future involving two giant spacecraft docking together in Earth orbit. Then, SpaceX will be ready to send a spacecraft to the moon to attempt a landing without astronauts aboard. Upon success, NASA will assign Starship for crewed landing in the agency's Artemis III mission, marking the return to the lunar surface by astronauts for the first time since 1972. As SpaceX attempts to transfer 10 tons of propellant from this tank to another inside Starship, it'll be on a scale never before seen in space. But that's just a small part of the total amount of fuel and oxidizer needed to fill the Starship spacecraft in orbit. The total propellant capacity of the spacecraft is about 1,200 tons. That's really when we start maturing the systems and when it gets really exciting for HLS because those are the building blocks that we need and frankly, it's never been done successfully in orbit, said Lisa Watson Morgan, NASA's HLS program manager in an interview last year. Though difficult to pinpoint exactly, NASA estimates that SpaceX will launch from 8 to 16 Starship tankers carrying propellant to LEO at a rapid pace, with each tanker carrying from 100 to 150 tons of fuel, liquid oxygen, and liquid methane. The tankers will dock to a larger depot in orbit to transfer fuel. This large depot could either be Starship V2 or Starship V3, as Elon Musk previously hinted at on X. The next mission that NASA wants Starship for this time is to achieve orbit. Simply reaching orbit would open up countless possibilities for NASA thereafter. 
When Starship achieves orbit, it'll demonstrate itself as the most impressive and unique spacecraft in the world, something NASA's never done. With its reusability and rapid turnaround capability at an incredibly reasonable cost, Starship is fulfilling a long-awaited dream in space exploration history. Consider the current state of affairs. The large space launch system rocket that NASA is developing can launch 95 tons into low Earth orbit. NASA and its contractors, led by Boeing, may be able to produce one per year. The vehicles, once used, will launch a payload costing around $2 billion or more per mission, then splash down in the ocean. In terms of lifting capacity, Starship and Super Heavy will be able to lift over 150 tons in the low Earth orbit, which is arguably something no other rocket can do. Moreover, SpaceX has the capability to manufacture a Starship every month and plans to reuse each booster in spacecraft dozens of times. Imagine the kind of space program NASA could have with the ability to launch 150 tons into orbit every two weeks, instead of just one mission per year, at a cost of $2 billion per year. Seriously, take a moment and think about that. We can say that NASA is in the most advantageous position here as they're paving the way for a heavy lift vehicle, in-space refueling, in-space propellant transfer, and large payloads to planetary surfaces. In other words, if Starship succeeds, NASA no longer needs to just choose one or two big things to do in space anymore. The agency will be able to do many different things at once. So is NASA overly reliant on SpaceX? To be honest, NASA is currently quite dependent on SpaceX. Over the past decade, SpaceX has secured NASA's exclusive contracts for transporting cargo and crew to the International Space Station, launching Gateway to the Moon, supplying goods for the Gateway, and currently ferrying humans to the lunar surface. The Artemis program could even transform into SpaceX's moon program. How so? If Starship can safely land humans on the moon, why wouldn't launching from Earth on a ship be safe? This would help NASA save costs for an SLS launch plus Orion, totaling around $3 billion per mission, and a complex rendezvous and assembly point in lunar orbit. This may be the future of a truly sustainable moon exploration program. That's beneficial for both NASA and SpaceX. But what about other spaceflight companies? Under this significantly more expensive plan involving SLS and Orion, NASA is also providing funding to a variety of aerospace companies, including Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Aerojet Rocketdyne, United Launch Alliance, and numerous other smaller players across the United States. Starship directly benefits SpaceX and its select group of suppliers, as well as any company tasked with building spacesuits for lunar missions, such as Axiom. However, NASA won't let that happen. History shows that all losing contractors will urge the politicians they support through positive contributions to oppose the program. Additionally, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson stated that expanding the coalition of nations participating in the Artemis program is one of his major goals. Increasing the space agency's dependence on SpaceX could go against this. In summary, with Starship, SpaceX has presented the best technical solution for NASA's stated goal of a sustainable moon exploration program. Starship will be able to transport more people and cargo to the moon than any other NASA solution, and it may do so with much less cost and more frequency. But while NASA is a space agency, its feet are still firmly planted in the political orbit of the Washington, D.C. Beltway. Technically, Starship may be the best solution to meet NASA's needs, but politically, perhaps not. If NASA wants to go to the moon and beyond, they'll have to work with countless contractors and countries, at least at this point in time. In the end, physics will prevail. If SpaceX can successfully make Starship operational in this third launch, then ultimately NASA's other options for human explorations of the solar system may pale in comparison. For the space agency, this is an audacious and surprising play, but the potential payoff is huge. One day, it may allow us to boldly go not just back to the moon, but far, far beyond. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.